months each year. That's usually when the monsoon rains begin, about May. That's when the war dies down, when the world forgets that Laos even exists. But then, with the dry season, one side or the other starts up the war again, and Laos recurs, so to speak. And that's the situation right now. The North Vietnamese have just retaken the strategic plain of jars. These are Laos's newest refugees being evacuated just before the communists moved in. The most tragic victims of the seesaw not-so-secret war in Laos are the refugees. The official estimate is that about one out of every four Laos has been a refugee, more than 600,000 of them. Some have been refugees more than once. Laos has the most displaced national population in the world. Some of these Lao refugees were relieved to get away from the war, but there are reports that some were encouraged to go, to deny the communists the manpower of these people. What goes through the minds of these refugees? Well, I've talked with hundreds of refugees from towns and villages all over northeastern Laos in the last six months. What they talk most about is American bombing, being told by the Mayo soldiers of the Royal Lao government side to leave their villages, and having to do porterage, that is, carrying arms and food for Pathet Lao soldiers. The thing they're most concerned about is the bombing, and particularly American bombing. Until 1967, Lao bombing by T-28s outnumbered was greater than American bombing. But starting in 1968, and particularly in 1969, after President Johnson stopped the bombing in North Vietnam and diverted the jets into Laos, American bombing has been a constant day and night affair for the refugees. They say that the planes came over all the time, shot at everything. People, cows, buffaloes, houses, rice fields, schools. They say that there were ordinary bombs, the palm, phosphorus, and anti-personnel bombs. They all say that they've lived for the last two years, mostly underground. What about American military fighter bombers, planes operating out of Thailand, attacking North Vietnamese positions in Northeast Laos? Can oh, you I, comment on that? Oh, I have no comment on that at all. We are armed reconnaissance, but that has nothing to do with bombing or Any anything Any comment like on the reports of an escalated American military commitment, reports of larger bombers, B-52s operating? Could you comment on any of that, sir? Well, I just might make you comment. We have no commitment in Laos. Our military assistance and materiel is being supplied pursuant to the request of the Royal Lao government and in consonance with the Geneva Agreements of 1962. But to any question that would uh, request an itemization of American military involvement, what would be the official American reply here, sir? Oh, there would certainly be no comment. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. The official American establishment in Laos is very much on the defensive on these sensitive matters. But one American reporter, based in Vientiane, recently managed to slip into Long Chain, the top secret CIA-supported base for guerrilla operations against the communists. Basically, Long Chain is a logistics base. They fly things in there in big planes and fly them out to the front, small planes. This includes soldiers. We saw half a dozen transport planes there, DC-3s, Caribous. The Strip can take bigger ones. We saw about a dozen T-28 unmarked single-engine propeller bombers. These are flown by Lao and Mayo pilots, but the Americans do all the maintenance, and these planes are part of a pool that runs out of Thailand, so an American pilot will shuttle them back and forth. The real thing they want to keep secret there, most of all, is that the U.S. Air Force runs Jolly Green Giant rescue helicopters out of there. This is ad an admission that the U.S. bombs Laos, and you can hear the American jets roaring overhead, and they lose about 10 or 12 Americans a month here. Are there more Long Changs in Laos? Uh, nothing as big as Long Cheng, but there are these little CIA hideaways tucked in the hills. There are a lot over a couple, half a dozen or so, over on the Bolivens Plateau. These are used for trail watching, uh, maybe sending in some people to cause mischief once in a while. There are others up by the Chinese border. Uh, they're literally nearly, uh, well, there are hundreds of little dirt runways in, the in, in Laos, and these are used for military purposes by the United States. 
By controlling the arms and the money, the U.S. in effect controls the war. Buildings like these house the requirements office, which is said to be a kind of camouflaged military assistance group. There is a variety of unarmed air support provided by Air America and Continental Air Services, which are usually referred to as CIA airlines. They admit to operating more than 100 planes and helicopters, but they are not as forthcoming as to the exact nature of all their assignments. They ferry cargo and military supplies around the country. They also transport military personnel. The people of the Antion and Laos have been described as the least urgent souls on earth. To hurry, to be desperate or frantic, the way a Westerner might be in the face of crisis, is looked upon with national embarrassment as a confession of human bankruptcy. The Antion is a city that can live side by side with its worst enemies. On one of the most locally expensive pieces of real estate in town, you find the official residence of the communist Patet Lao, and its objective is nothing less than taking over the country. And not far away, another anomaly, you find the Patet Lao's accomplices, the embassy of North Vietnam. Even the North Vietnamese may be a bit perplexed to find themselves sharing a capital with the embassy of South Vietnam, just a few dusty streets away. That is Laos. What else is Laos is that you can find the embassy of communist China in the midst of all this. And everyone knows that Peking helped supply the guns to the Patet Lao and to the North Vietnamese in their effort to make Laos a communist state. The Great Vientiane panorama is filled with odd political economic contrasts. There are Laos who will quickly agree, but they know too that the Laos are powerless. They are very scared. They know that there is war in this country, and most of them are affected. But they feel that they are not capable to influence the course of the events. A funeral in Vientiane for a cabinet minister's pilot son. It's reported by Americans here that the Laos in recent months have been losing an average of more than 10 men a day, killed in action, fighting the enemy. In a country of less than three million people, that's a lot of war death. For the United States, one major priority in Laos has been to try to interdict the heavy flow of Hanoi's men and material down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Spilling North Vietnamese blood on the trail would save American blood in South Vietnam. But the question now is whether Hanoi will follow up its latest successful offensive in Laos. There isn't an American in the country who doesn't believe that Hanoi, if it should make that critical decision, could cut through the Royal Lao forces and the U.S. bombing and reach the Mekong River. What would the U.S. do then? Escalate in Laos? Get out? What? That is the agonizing question that North Vietnam can fling at the White House. Bernard Kalb, CBS News, The Antion.